We've seen the ugly side of discrimination. But is all discrimination bad? If you answered yes, then you're discriminating against discrimination. No, it isn't. The Olympic Games discriminates against people like Craig, so only the fittest swimmers will be selected to compete for gold. When cells in our body become cancerous, we discriminate against them using scalpels and radiation, so our bodies remain healthy. Society has developed its own chemotherapy for the undesirables within, which is known by many names across different cultures. In Sweden, it's called Jantelorven. In Japan, Deruku wa Ateru, meaning the nail sticking up, gets hammered down. In Australia, we simply call it the tall poppy syndrome. Former Prime Minister and underrated fast bowler John Howard labelled it protective scepticism, and it's keeping our society strong and vibrant with a Darwinian selection process. Poppies are the source of many addictive things. Morphine, smack, orange and poppy seed muffins. Here we're addicted to one more thing about the poppy, cutting off their heads. So prevalent is the tall poppy syndrome in Australia that we've come to believe it is quintessentially Australian like Farlap, Pavlova and getting fingered at the beach. I mean, fingering someone at the beach. But how did it get its name? Why do we persist with the old fashioned term tall poppy when we can just say fuck with? The reason is rooted deep in the soil of history. Thousands of years ago, Roman historian Titus Livius used poppies as a metaphor in his account of the tyrannical King Tarquin. His son Sextus asked his father's advice on how to govern an unruly city. Tarquin said nothing, but walked outside, took a stick, and swept it across his garden, thereby cutting off the heads of the tallest poppies growing there. Sextus perceived that this meant he should slay those people who were outstanding in influence or ability, and so had a number of eminent citizens put to death. So where are we 2,000 years later, far removed from tales of murder, horticulture and children named Sextus? I think we can say that there are three main types of tall poppies. Uh, you've got the braggers, the people who have achieved a lot and then start bragging about it. You've got the people who have achieved a lot uh, and then because of that uh, engage in unlawful behaviour, only to find that the law catches up with them. Is it just famous or well-known people that are affected by it, or does it affect normal people as well? In some cases, you've got students who are treated as tall poppies by their peers because they stand out in the classroom. As soon as someone step outside of the work or area that they've achieved in, just thinking that, well, I'm good at this, so I will be good at that, they are prone to being treated as, um, as, as, as tall poppies. To see an example, one has to look no further than the cover of a 90s magazine. Craig McLaughlin is one of Australia's most versatile and recognisable performing artists. He's acted in iconic soaps, won a gold logie and done us proud on the stages of London's West End. But despite these achievements, when he tried to expand his body of work to stand-up comedy, Australia said no. Could you imagine if the wedding had have been Harold and Bouncer? Oh, Bouncer, wait till the honeymoon, come on. Long before the English tabloids suggested that I was secretly gay and that I frequently sodomised my friend's pets. Hey, I, 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 Mona. Oh, come on! <laughs> the unusually high-brow NRL footy show audience rejected his repertoire of sodomy and bestiality jokes and the hostile crowd turned on him. Smelling blood in the water, the media too joined in the feeding frenzy and they were right to do it. Just as ancient Spartans threw their weak, deformed babies off Mount Tagadus to keep their society strong, Craig McLaughlin was sacrificed so the Australian comedy scene would remain a comedy scene. In some ways, he's a hero. On stage, Craig died so others might live. Our well-known and often lamented tall poppy syndrome are probably good for this country. It is hard to imagine a Hitler or a Mussolini ever surviving the dry wit of an Australian pub crowd. The tall poppy syndrome is like excrement. It buries the unworthy and acts like fertiliser for the truly talented. Take, for example, Aussie icon Paul Hogan. His film, Crocodile Dundee, was the highest grossing Australian film of all time, and his tourism advertisements helped put Australia on the map. How did we say thank you? The tall poppy way, with the Australian tax office saying, that's not a tax return, this is a tax return. And they showed him a correctly filled out tax return. 
Despite these attacks, Hoag's won the day and our lovable larrikin is still smiling from ear to ear, whether he's happy or not. There is unfortunately a downside to the tall poppy syndrome. Like when a tumour is removed, inevitably some healthy tissue goes with it. In military terms, it's called collateral damage. And in Australia, we've had a lot of damage. Damage like Peter Andre. Talented and handsome, with a six pack he could bounce a koala off. Andre burst onto the scene in 1989 after he was discovered on Hey Hey It's Saturday. Yet even after his initial hits, he still wasn't treated like a bona fide singer. Perhaps the Australian public was at saturation point. Too many soap stars, too many singles. That had enough. And Peter was bundled in with the pretenders. He then left our shores, never to return. Here in the UK, the Andre brand is a juggernaut with concerts, TV shows, perfumes and this chain of American style cafes. But because the tall poppy attack was so ruthless, none of Peter's creamy success will flow into the mouths of Australians. How do we make sure talented, worthy Australians aren't unfairly caught up in a tall poppy pogrom? In ancient Rome, when a general achieved a great victory, he was given a triumph. And as he made his way through the cheering crowds, a slave would stand behind him and whisper, Respice te hominum te memento. Look behind you, remember, you're only a man. Could we use a similar system today to keep potential tall poppies grounded and protected from unjust attack? Perhaps someone following our celebrities reading quotes from their Twitter feed. We need to truly Australianise and imbue a sense of fair go into this phenomenon called the tall poppy syndrome. From now on, let's all strive to replace it with the tall wattle syndrome. Let's treat the aspirations of our intrepid men and women like this magnificent bush flower and allow it to grow until it falls over by itself, where it'll be easier to chop up.